Good afternoon, everyone. We are actually in the middle of finishing the lecture on the corporation code. So this is part 8, 9, and 10, and which will correspond to Title 8, the corporate books and records. And then after that, we're going to discuss about Title 9, which is merger or consolidation, and then Title 10, appraisal right. So we begin with Title 8, corporate books and records. So let me share my screen with you. Okay. Now class, this is what we call as the STB or the stock and transfer book. No? So this is the book which is required by law under section 74 to be kept by the corporation. Now, the other documents which are required to be kept by the corporation are the following. Number one, books for the minutes of the stockholders and board of directors meetings. This is commonly prepared by the corporate secretary or the assistant corporate secretary in the absence of the corporate secretary. Now, the record of the transactions of the corporation, the stock and transfer book, and other books required to be kept under Section 74. Now, what are the contents of a stock and transfer book? Actually, class, for the corporate lawyers, no, we are dealing with these kinds of books for the corporation. The STB would usually um, contains the following. No? All stocks in the names of the stockholders alphabetically arranged. Ito class yung kulay green na libro eh. No? Na if after you have incorporated or registered the corporation with the SEC, the SEC will issue the STB or the stock and transfer book. The STB class is where you record all the shares of stocks and the uh, current subscribers of the stock of the corporation. Now, the installment paid and unpaid on all stocks for which the subscription has been made and the date of payment of any installment. Now, you recall that uh, for the unpaid subscription, it can be paid on the date specified in the subscription contract or upon the date of call by the board of directors. Aside from the foregoing class, now you also record the transfer of the shares of stocks of the corporation. Because class, a stockholder can transfer no, the shares of stocks to another person through a deed of sale or assignment. Or for example, a stockholder dies, then the heirs of the stockholders will have to inherit the shares of stocks left by the deceased stockholders. Now, these transfers class are recorded in the STB or the Stock and Transfer Book. Actually, class, nakalagay dyan yung mga certificate of stocks number no, and the name of the stockholder, the number of shares of the shares of stocks hold under such name. And then, of course, if, if a shares of stocks has been transferred to another person, then you have to cancel that entry in the STB and issue another entry in favor of the transferee. So that is how the STB is uh, being kept by the corporation. And then such other entries as may be provided by the bylaws. Now, who makes entry in the STB? It is the corporate secretary. Now, the corporate secretary is the one responsible for making entries and in keeping the STB under Section 74. Now, class, as a stockholder, you have the inherent or proprietary rights to inspect the corporate books. Kasi, syempre, class, yung mga stockholders, mga investors yan. So, in case that they would want to make sure that the corporation is in a good financial standing, now, each stockholder can demand to inspect no, demand to inspect the corporate books. Now, who are the persons who are authorized or given by law the right to inspect the corporate books? Number one, you have the director, trustee, stockholder, or member. The voting trust certificate holder. You remember, class, our discussion in the voting trust agreement or VTA. Now, in a voting trust agreement, a stockholder 
can what mortgage or pledge the shares of stocks in favor of his creditor no to secure the payment of a loan so for example class stockholder ka tapos um, meron kang utang sa isang tao no in order to secure the payment of the loan diba tapos wala kang property na pwede mong iprenda pwede mong iprenda yung shares of stocks mo now if you have pledged your shares of stocks in favor of your creditor you have to execute what a loan contract which is the principal contract and a voting trust agreement now the voting trust agreement has the effect of making the trustee creditor no the uh, making the trustee creditor the present stockholder kasi class pag nag-execute ka ng VTA the shares of stocks standing under the name of the debtor will be cancelled and a new certificate of stock will be issued in favor of the name or under the name of the creditor. Now, if the certificate of stock has been transferred under the name of the creditor, pursuant to a voting trust agreement, then that creditor will now become the stockholder of the corporation and since the shares of stock are now standing under his name, he, how, he has now the right to demand inspection of the corporate books. So take note that in a voting trust agreement, it is the certificate or the voting trust certificate holder or the trustee creditor who can demand inspection of the corporate books. Now, what happens to the debtor or previous stockholder. Now, unless and until that the shares of stocks issued under the name of the trustee creditor has been reverted back to the obligor debtor uh, former shareholder, then he has no right to demand inspection of the corporate books. Okay. And then another person under item three is the stockholder of a sequestered, sequestered company and the beneficial owner of the shares. Now, class, anong ibig sabihin ng beneficial owner? We have discussed this, I think, in part three of our lecture video. Now, when you say beneficial owner, class, kasi minsan, for example, you have a sister or a relative who is working abroad, and he or she wants to purchase property in the Philippines. Now, because she has no time to, to uh, process the transfer of of uh, ownership over a property under his name, no, the uh, your relative can ask you to put the ownership or title of the property under your name. So ipapangalan mo na sa but in truth and in fact, the property is owned by your relative. Now that um, arrangement is called what? The the relative who is the real and true owner is called the beneficial owner. Siya ang totoong may -ari. He is the real and absolute owner of the property. And then, the one, uh, the, the other person under whose name the property is registered is called the naked owner. Naked as in hubad. The naked owner. Now, the beneficial owner of the shares can also demand inspection of the uh, corporate books. Now, class. I, I, you remember I was uh, able to um, draft a document which is called the uh, Deed of Trust or Declaration of Trust. No, uh, When I was working in a law firm in Makati, we have a client and uh, this client doesn't want his, his name to appear in the corporate books, which is why what he, what he did was to ask another person, his trusted person, to purchase the uh, shares of stocks of another corporate corporation and register the shares of stocks under his name. Now, what we did to protect the client, who is the real and absolute owner of the shares of stocks, is to what prepare and draft a deed of or declaration of trust. A declaration of trust class. Ang ibig sabihin niyan, merong trustor at merong trustee. Ang trustor no siya yung beneficial owner. And the trustee is the one, is the person under whose name the property is registered. 
Now, the beneficial owner or the trustor can also have the right to demand for the inspection of the books. Okay. Now, class, what is the basis of the stockholder's right to demand inspection of the corporate books? Bakit kaya binibigyan ng batas? Nang karapatan ang mga stockholders na tignan no, yung books ng corporation. So sabi dito, as owners of the assets and property of the corporation, stockholders should be entitled to the right of inspection which is predicated upon the necessity of self-protection. Okay. Now, take note of the limitations given by law on the right to inspect the stock and transfer book. For example, class, hindi ka pwedeng mag-demand ng inspection at 12 midnight. Di ba? Kasi syempre, oh, hindi bukas yung corporation. So this right must be exercised only during reasonable hours on business days. For example, Saturday is not a business day, therefore, you do not have the right to demand inspection of the books under Section 74 of the Corporation Code. So, etc., etc. Et These limitations are self-explanatory. Um, as it appears in your screen, I will leave them to you. Okay. Okay, class. Just take note of item number five, that the right to inspect this, the uh, corporate books does not extend to trade secrets. Trade secrets class. Kasi may mga corporation na meron silang, for example, if it's uh, um, a, a corporation which is engaged in the invention of some technology or uh, it, is, it is a corporation engaged in robotics and that there are some certain uh, uh, trade secrets that the company would like to protect and that information is not readily available in the public then you do not have the right to inspect the books because otherwise, if you are granted inspection of the books, then it will, um, the, the, the trade secret will be disclosed or revealed open to the general public. Or for example, class, there are corporations like for example, catering or a restaurant business na meron dyan mga um, uh, trade secrets in the recipe on how a particular food is being prepared. No? which is uh, protected by the intellectual property uh, law. For example, the manner by which a particular uh, pastry is baked. Now, these are trade secrets which are protected by law. The stockholders may not demand inspection of a corporate book if such inspection will result to the revelation of the trade secrets. And then, class, take note also of item number six, no? the, the bank secrecy law or the Foreign, Foreign Currency Deposits Act. Now, we have a law protecting what absolute confidentiality of all bank deposits, be it peso deposit or foreign currency. Now, uh, because of the absolute confidentiality of these bank accounts, no, this serves as a limitation on the right of the stockholders to demand inspection of the corporate books. Under the bank secrecy law class, only the depositor can allow inspection of any information relative to his bank deposits in the absence of a written consent or permission from the, uh, per, uh, from the particular depositor, the bank may not disclose any information relative thereto. Otherwise, they will incur criminal penalties or criminal liabilities under the bank secrecy law. Okay. Now, we go to Title IX, Merger and Consolidation. No? So, medyo maikli lang ang discussion natin for Title VIII. Just remember, class, no, if there is something that I want you to remember under Title VIII, please uh, be familiar with the limitations on the right to demand inspection of the uh, corporate books. Okay? Now, we go to Title IX Merger and Consolidation. Now, class, for those of you who are fond of uh, reading the newspapers, no? yung mga nagbabasa ng mga uh, news items relative to businesses, may kita ninyo, class, babalitaan ninyo dyan, maraming korporasyon ngayon ang nagkakaroon ng tinatawag na merger or consolidation. Now, these are form of corporate 
combinations in order for companies to be able to compete now with uh, in the market against their competitors. For example, class uh, the banks. No, maraming banko ngayon ang resulta ng merger. For example, Equitable PCI Bank. No, Equitable Bank and PCI Bank used to be what separate banks or separate juridical entities. No, um, and many other banks, no, and corporations which have resulted to merger or consolidation. Now, class. So what do we mean when we say merger or consolidation? These terms have distinctions. They are technical terms under the law. They have a particular um, definition and therefore they may not be interchanged. Now, when you say merger, this results when a corporation absorbs the other and remains existing. Now, the other corporation is dissolved. And consolidation is the union of two or more existing corporations no, uh, resulting to a new corporation. Okay. So merger is when a, cor when a corporation absorbs the other and consolidation is where these two corporations are combined um, resulting to a new entity. Okay. Now class, let us discuss about the procedure in a corporate merger or consolidation or what we call a corporate combination. Okay, so this starts with a plan by the representatives of the constituent corporations providing for the details of the merger. Now, what should the plan of merger or consolidation contain? Number one, it should contain the name of the corporations involved or what we call the constituent corporations. Second, the terms and conditions of carrying the uh, merger or consolidation. The statement of changes, for example, in any present articles of surviving corporation or the articles of new corporation to be formed in case of a consolidation and such other provisions with respect to the proposed merger or consolidation as are deemed necessary or desirable. Now, the article of merger or the article of consolidation, now this is the document which is to be signed by the corporate officers, by the president or the vice president of each corporation and signed by the secretary or assistant secretary. Okay, class. Now, the plan of merger or the plan of consolidation, if it is a stock corporation, then the articles must state the number of the outstanding capital stock. Or in case of a non-stock corporation, the number of the members to be admitted in the resulting combined corporation. Now, as to each corporation, the number of shares or members voting for or against such plan respectively must also be stated in the articles of merger or consolidation. No? The board of each corporation shall draw up a plan of merger or consolidation which must be approved by a majority vote of the stockholders of each corporation. Now take note class that in case that the corporation engages in a merger or consolidation, then stockholders can exercise its appraisal right. Kasi class, yung appraisal right, for example, if a corporation will combine into another corporation and existing stockholders would be um, necessarily exposed to some certain liabilities no, arising from the other corporation, no, so that the law gives them what? the remedy to exercise the appraisal right. Ibig sabihin, they would want to be out or to be bought out from the corporation because um, they deem that the corporate combination would not benefit their investments in some ways. So, tandaan nyo, class. In case that the corporation will engage in a merger or consolidation that gives the dissenting stockholder the, the, the right to demand for the exercise of its appraisal right. Okay. Now, the amendment of plan or of merger or consolidation must be ratified by a majority vote of the board and 
a vote of two thirds of the stockholders. Okay. And then this must be approved by the Securities and Exchange Commission. Okay. Now, class, the merger or consolidation will take effect only upon issuance by the SEC of the Certificate of Merger or Consolidation. Okay. That is the general rule. Now, the exception to the general rule is when uh, there are certain corporations class na kung saan the approval of the SEC is not sufficient for, uh, in order for the corporation to be successfully merged. No, for example, banking is institutions, insurance companies, for example, public utilities, educational institutions, and other special corporations governed by special law needs a favorable recommendation of the appropriate government agency before the merger is will be uh, considered by law as having be, uh, or having taken effect. Now, for example, class, banko, kailangan may favorable recommendation from the Banko Central ng Pilipinas. Or if it's an educational institution, it needs approval by the DepEd or the CHED if it's a higher um, learning institution. The, if it's an insurance company, it must be approved by what? The Insurance Commission. Okay. In other words, class, before merger takes effect, no, there must be a favorable recommendation or approval from the appropriate government agency. Okay, now, class, if I want you to remember no, an important concept under Title IX, that is the effect of merger or consolidation. What happens, class, if two corporations will merge into to one entity? Or two corporations will have to produce a new corporation out of the combination. Class, take note of the effects of merger or consolidation. Now, the first effect when two corporations merge is that the constituent corporations shall become a single entity. Pag nag-merge na sila, class, in the eyes of the law, they are now considered as a single corporation. Now, the separate existence of the constituent corporations shall cease to exist except that the surviving corporation no, or the uh, consolidate, consolidated corporation will now um, exist as the product of the corporate combination. Now, class, take note of item 3 flashed in your screen. That is the most important effect of merger or consolidation. And it reads, the surviving or the consolidated corporation shall possess all the rights, privileges, immunities, franchise of each of the constituent corporations. Class, take note also of item 5. No? The surviving or consolidated corporation shall be responsible and liable for all the liabilities and obligations of each of the constituent corporations in the same manner as if the surviving or consolidated corporation had itself incurred such liabilities or obligations. Now, what do we mean by this? I remember class, um, I used to handle a criminal case in relation to this one. No, ang nangyari dun sa kaso na yun is that um, a property was uh, sold to my client and subsequently it was transferred to another person no, through the use of a falsified or a fictitious deed of sale. So, anong nangyari? Itong banko na to, binenta niya yung property doon sa client pero na yung, yung title ng lupa nalipat sa ibang tao. Pinalabas na yung banko na yun Nag-execute ng second deed of sale over the same property, transferring ownership of the property to another person. Now, what I did is to file a, cri uh, a criminal complaint for estafa committed through falsification of a public document. Now, what happened was, so nagpadala ang prosecutor's office ng Sabina doon sa 
sa corporation, sa bangko, no? At pinagpapaliwanag sila kung bakit dalawa ang deed of sale nung property from the bank to my client and from the bank from another person. So bakit dalawa ang deed of sale? Binenta mo na. No, binenta mo na sa isang tao tapos binenta mo na naman sa pangalawa. Now, when the corporation or the bank filed its counter affidavit, okay, guess what? O anong defense nila? Ang sabi ng ang sabi ng bangko class, hindi kami yung korporasyon na nag-execute ng deed of sale. Ha? Hindi kami yun. Kasi yung corporation na yun is another corporation and it, it, it is not us. Okay? It, is, it pertains to a different corporation. Okay, so, so binasa ko yung counter affidavit. And then it turned out class na nagkaroon na pala ng merger between these two banks. Previously, magkaiba silang banko. No? Meron silang separate juridical personality. But then again, nagkaroon na sila ng merger. Meaning to say, nag-combine na sila and now, iisa na silang entity. Now, okay, if you are the lawyer or the counsel for the, for the buyer, no? what will you argue? you argue the effects of merger or consolidation. Ang sabi dyan under um, paragraph 5, the surviving corporation shall be responsible and liable for all the liabilities and obligations of each constituent corporations. So, class, ang sabi ng batas, kapag ang dalawang korporasyon ay nagsanib, no, nag-combine, lahat ng liabilities and obligations noong dalawang korporasyon ay malilipat doon sa bagong entity. Ang sabi ng batas, in the same manner, no, the liability is imposed in the same manner as if the surviving corporation had itself incurred such liabilities or obligation. Ang sabi ng batas class, it is as if that the merged consolidation, the surviving corporation, had itself incurred. Ibig sabihin, it is as if siya ang umutang. It is as if siya ang nag-enter into a contract with another person. In other words, class, the law is telling you that the merger or consolidation does not have the effect of extinguishment of obligation. Okay, let us go back In our study on the law on obligation and contracts. Di ba sa law on obligation and contracts, nakalagay doon ang different modes on how an obligation is extinguished. Now, merger or consolidation is not one of the modes of extinguishment of an obligation. Which is why, class, in the same manner, if two corporations have combined Then, whatever obligation or liabilities the other corporation has incurred prior to the merger will have to be carried away or carried into the new surviving or consolidated corporations. So, take note of item number five. Okay. So, these are the limitations of merger or consolidation. These are flashed in your screen. No, it must be consistent with the corporation code, etc., etc. These are self-explanatory. I leave them to you. Now, class, we go to Title 10, Appraisal Rights. No, this is the last topic for this episode, Appraisal Right. Now, class, ano ba yung Appraisal Right? Class, yung Appraisal Right, no, ito yung karapatan ng mga stockholders na i-require yung corporation na bilihin yung shares of stocks ng stockholder na yon. Ibig sabihin, ibinabalik niya na sa corporation. Wini-withdraw niya na yung kanyang investment. Now, what are the instances given by law when the stockholders can exercise its appraisal rights? So, class, memorize the instances or the circumstances wherein appraisal right may be exercised. Class, you have to memorize All of these items flash in your screens. One, two, three, four, five. 
memorize class. Ha? Tandaan nyo yan. Now, for example, if the corporate term has been extended or shortened, for example, the corporation is good for 50 years, tapos bigla mong binawasan, ginawa mong 25 years, no, the, the stockholders can, what? Pull out their investment from the corporation. Or for example, under the Articles of Incorporation, ABC Corporation is to exist only for 10 years. Now, the stockholders having in mind this corporate term, sa inisip nila, investment nila for 10 years lang. So, okay lang. Now, pag in-extend mo yung corporate term, no, the, uh, the stockholders can also pull out their investment by exercising their appraisal right. Now, what else? Restrictions of rights and privileges of shares with the amendment of the Articles of Incorporation, sale of all or substantially all, all corporate assets, equity investment in non-primary purpose business enterprise, and lastly, merger or consolidation. Now, class, I want you to understand the concept of sale of all or substantially all corporate assets. Okay, class. In practical application, isipin ninyo nag-invest kayo, for example, to a certain corporation. Now, nabalitaan nyo sa dyaryo na nililiquidate na nila yung assets nila. When you say liquidation, binibenta na nila yung assets nila. No, So, syempre, magkakaroon niya ng adverse effect as regards the stock holes. Iniisip nila, nalulugi na ba yan? Bakit nagbibenta na ng assets? Now, in case that the corporate assets are being sold, the investors, the stockholders, can demand for the payment of their stock, shares of stocks or in other words, uh, ma-buy out na yung investment nila from the corporation. No? Now, anong ibig sabihin class nung sale of all or substantially all corporate assets? Class, yung sale of all assets madali intindihin. Kapag binibenta na, for sale na lahat ng assets, wala nang matitira, pwede ka na mag-exercise ng appraisal rights. How about the sale of substantially all corporate assets? Anong ibig sabihin nun? No? Sale of substantially all. Ibig sabihin, hindi lahat. Pero parang lahat ng corporate assets. Now, class, for example, ABC Corporation is... Uh, engage in the business of production of ice, yellow. Nagbebenta sila ng yellow. Okay. Now, may mga tools, di ba, in the creation of a tube ice. Meron silang machineries, and then merong water tanks, no? and then merong warehouse. Now, class, in case that, for example, the board of directors has issued a board resolution, to sell the machinery which creates the ice. Ano ba? Ibebenta na nila yung mga ano, yung mga uh, tawag dito, yung mga makinang na gumagawa ng yelo. No? Pero yung warehouse, hindi pa nila ibinibenta. Now, class, the question is, will the sell of the machinery which creates the ice would justify a stockholder from exercising his appraisal right? Ha, hindi pa binibenta lahat ng properties class. Ha? Hindi pa lahat. Andun pa yung warehouse. Ha? Andun pa yung water tank. Ang binibenta pa lang class is the machinery which creates the tube ice. Now, my question to you is that can the sale of the machinery which creates the tube ice justify the exercise of the appraisal right? Now, the answer to that question class is yes. Yes, yes, yes. Because, class, the sale of the machinery which creates the tube ice will render the transaction of the business beyond control. Or it will, uh, the, uh, the sale of the tube ice no, will, and will disable the corporation from proceeding with its business transaction. Ibig sabihin, class, pag binenta mo yung asset na yan, kahit may matitira pang asset, the, corp the corporation will not be able to go on with its business transaction. Which is why, class, the law specifically states 
that the sale of all or substantially all corporate assets will justify the exercise of the appraisal rights. Okay. Take note that the exercise of the appraisal rights or the all of the above instances require the two-third votes of the outstanding capital stock and that the appraisal rights pertains only to stockholders who have actually dissented from the above enumerated transactions. Class, there are requisites for the proper exercise of the appraisal rights which are flashed in your screen, one, two, three, four, five. Memorize all of these requisites. Huh? Memorize the requisites for the exercise of appraisal rights. Class, isa lang dyan ang mawala, no? invalid na ang exercise of the appraisal rights. No? The stockholder must have voted against the proposed action of the corporation. There must be a written demand on the corporation for the payment of the fair value of his shares. Number three, such demand must have made within 30 days after the date on which the vote was taken. Number four, surrender of the stock certificates representing his shares. And number five, there must be presence of the unrestricted retained earnings in the books of the corporation to cover such payment. So memorize the requisites of the exercise of the right of the of appraisal right or the right to exercise the or the exercise of appraisal rights okay so this ends our discussion on title 8 title 9 and title 10 so there are only few remaining topics under the corporation code i hope that you are learning a lot from this series of uh, uh, video lectures and i see you next episode again. Thank you.